All right, so section 7.1 is on slope fields and differential equations. All right, we've done a little bit with differential equations, but not a lot. All right, a couple different notes on here. So note one, it says Euler's method, or Euler, as you might call it, because it's Euler. Euler's method is on the BC exam, but it's not on the AB, so we're not going to cover it in this course. Um, that is in section 7.1 of your book, so if you want to look it over, you can. Uh, note number two, separable differential equations are in section 7.4, but I'm combining the two sections. So if you need more information on that, then you can go to section 7.4. All right, so um, a differential equation is an equation that contains an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. All right, like I've said, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, these are heavily tested on the free response questions. There's always one of the free response questions that has a slope field and differential equation on it. Okay, so number one. So it says, show that y equals x minus x to the negative one is a solution of the differential equation x times y prime plus y uh, equals 2x. Okay, so this is just a basic thing. We're just going to show that the original works in the differential equation. So first I need to know what y prime is. So y prime of my original is 1. My negative 1 goes to the front so it becomes plus x to the negative 2. And I'm testing in the second equation. So I'm going to have x times y prime, which is 1, plus x to the negative 2, plus y, which was x minus x to the negative 1. And I want to slowly get that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So you can do this a couple different ways. Some people like to say equals with a question mark, 2x. I usually just like to keep simplifying down until I get the right-hand side. So I'm going to have x times 1 is x, x times x to the negative 2 is x to the negative 1, add your exponents, plus x minus x to the negative 1. You see that your x to the negative 1 and negative x to the negative 1 cancel, so you get 2x. That's the right-hand side. So you've shown that it works in that differential equation. Make sense? Okay, these get a little bit harder. Uh, right hand side. Left hand side equals right hand side. You can even do your little fancy box that we've talked about if you really want to because you've now proven that the two sides are equal. <laughs> a little fancy box, have I not talked about that? No. Like in the higher level math classes when you prove a problem you always put a little box at the end to show this is the end, I did the problem. So if you want to you can do that. <laughs> they have them in your books too if you ever notice when they prove something they put a little box. Okay, so show that every member of the family of functions, y equals 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t. So c is any constant. That's why it's called the family of functions, because it could be any c value. Is a solution of the differential equation. Okay, so first we need to find what y prime is. So y prime, do your quotient rule. So low d high. So what's the derivative of high? The yeah, sc e to the t. Remember the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. All right, minus high d low. So d low is negative c e to the t all over the square of what's below. Okay, simplify the top, so you get c e to the t minus c squared e to the 2t. Did you guys see that? Because you'd have e to the t times e to the t, so you add your exponents. Minus, now I have a minus and I have a minus here, so if you want to just make those plus, you can. So it's going to be plus c e to the t plus c squared e to the 2t, all over the denominator. So your numerator, the c squared e to the 2t is cancel. So you have 2c e to the t. All over 1 minus c e to the t squared. 
I know it's weird with the C, the C's, but you can think of them like numbers if you want, like five or something like that. All right, so that's what y prime is. All right, so now we're checking in this uh, differential equation. So I already have y prime. I'm going to see if it's equal to the one half. Well, let me start with the left, the right hand side this time. So I have my one half y squared minus one. That's equal to one half y squared. So do you guys see how we're gonna what we're gonna have to do? <laughs> Messy. One plus c e to the t over one minus c e to the t squared minus one. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> you want to see if it's equal. So we're going to square out the top, square out the bottom. This is not going to be hard. You guys will be fine. Um, I would probably not square out the bottom. Think about why you wouldn't square out the bottom. In the original, it's not squared, right? Y prime is not squared on the bottom. So just square out the top, and then we'll get common denominators with that one. Do you guys see where we're going with this? Yeah, Rachel? Why did they put in like, the original equation Um, you could start with the y prime like this, and you could try to manipulate it to get this. But it's easier to start with the more complicated part and then simplify down. So I just foil out the top. Okay, and I want to get common denominators with that minus 1 part. So I'm going to have minus, so it's going to be 1 minus c e to the t squared over itself. Okay. <coughs> Brackets around all of it. Okay, did you guys see how I got all that? So this part right here was the 1. This part I foiled out. Because it's the same thing over itself, right? 5 over 5 is 1, 10 over 10, same thing. All right, so equals 1 half. So now I foiled out the top part on the left side. Now I need to foil out the right side, this part. And I'm going to distribute the negative as I do this. So I'm going to have 1. It would normally be minus 2c and so on. So I'm going to have plus 2c e to the t. And then it's going to be, it was normally plus, and so now it's going to be minus uh, c squared e to the 2t. We're almost there. So some things are going to cancel, the c squared parts. the 1 minus 1. So you get 4 c e to the t, but then what else do we have? So remember, we're trying to get over here. What would you say? 1 half, right? So you're going to end up with 2 c e to the t all over 1 minus c e to the t squared. And that's equal to y, y prime. So we're done. Make sense? So start with the more complicated side, simplify down. So oftentimes the um, AP test on the free response problems, like part A, will say verify that this is true. This would be a typical type of thing. It will say verify that this is a, is a solution to the differential equation. Okay. All right. So unfortunately, it's kind of hard to come up with explicit formulas for the solutions to differential equations. So for instance, let's say I had this original differential equation, and I wanted to come up with one of the solutions like a solution like that. It's sometimes hard, hard to do. There's a whole branch of mathematics dedicated to this. I mean, I took one class in college. You could take 50 classes on differential equations. They break into partial, ordinary. I mean, they, it's really a crazy field. OK, so um, they're not really easy to find. Some of them are really hard. However, you can learn a lot about the solution with something called slope fields or direction fields. Um, and 
when I said that the AP test always has these questions, this is always one of the parts. Like it will say, sketch the slope field for this equation. Okay, and these really aren't that hard. Um, they're just kind of, they can be time consuming, I guess. Usually there's only 12 points that you have to find on your test. Um, this I have more than 12, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so, um, okay, so on this, let's say like your AP test will have like dots, and it will say, find the slope at those different dots. So this, this first dot that I drew right here is the point one, zero. So that would rep be represented right here on your chart, right? One for x, zero for y. Okay, the slope at that is given by this equation, x plus y. So if you just add x and y, what do you get? One. So on your AP test, you would need to sketch in a slope of one. So think about what a slope of one would look like, up one over one. So it'd be like that. Make sense? Okay, we're going to do that for all of these different points. Okay, so the first point is negative 2, 0, so it's over here. The slope there would be negative 2. So negative 2 would be going down 1, or down 2 over 1. So kind of make it point, I mean, don't draw it this big, but see it's going to point to this corner right here. So it's going to be just like this. Does that make sense? Mine doesn't look quite as steep as it should be. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Okay, something like that. Okay, then at negative one, zero, it's at negative one. At zero, zero, it's at zero. So the slope of zero is just flat. Do you see how you're going to fill in the rest of it? Okay, at two, zero, it's two. So it's more steep. Okay, then we're down at, at the, or we're up at the ones. So we have negative two, one is negative one. So it's a little bit less steep than the one below it. Negative one, one is at zero. Zero, one is at one. Okay, continue the rest of them. So you should get something like that. Okay, what this is doing, it's kind of like a magnetic field. Like you're going to follow the different lines and create a curve. And this is creating like the family of functions. So it's creating it for all different initial values. So in our case, we have a particular initial value. We said when x is 0, y equals 1. So that means that we should have 0, 1 as one of our points. Can you guys see my 0, 1? It's kind of hard to see. So that means that you're going to follow this slope field. So you're going to have some kind of curve like that. I mean, you could draw on a much, many more of these little dashes and it would help you see it. Does that make sense though? You kind of have to follow where it's telling you to go. You don't understand? Okay. Do you guys see how this? There's a line here that's being created. You can't go past that line. You're gonna. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, they'll give you an, an initial initial value. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely like that. Let's see. Okay. So see why it's called a direction field? Follow that direction. Okay, let's try this one. It's the same kind of thing. This is a little bit harder. You can't just add the two uh, rows, right? Okay. See, so if y prime equals the y value minus two of the x value, so zero minus a negative or two times negative two, so you'd get four. The next one's going to be two. 
0, negative 2, negative 4. How about the next row? So 1 minus 2 times negative 2, so 5. This is 3, 1, negative 1. I think I messed something up. I always have to write these ones down. 1 minus negative 1 minus 2 times negative 2. Yeah, so it should be 3. Did I mess the other one up then? That's negative 3, right? Okay, next one. Anybody done completely? <laughs> What'd you get for the next one? Okay. Okay. You guys agree? All right, so then we just fill in the slopes for each one. So go to negative 2, 0, and you have a slope of 4, so really steep. Go to negative 1, 0, so it's not as steep. Zero, zero is zero. One, zero is negative two. Two, zero is negative four. So it's very symmetric. Okay, then we're on the one row. So negative two, one is five, so even steeper. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, steeper. Whoops, that's three, isn't it? Not negative three. How do you determine what? Um, positive slopes go this way, negative slopes go that way, is what you're asking. Just normal, just like slope when you learned in algebra one. Okay, so negative two, negative one is <laughs> They're hard, I know. I remember when I first learned these. I actually didn't have to know these for my calc class because they didn't start appearing on the exam until like two or three years after I took it. Okay. Do you guys have something like that? <laughs> okay, now your initial point is 1, 0. So go over to 1, 0. And think about the kind of the path that you're going to follow. So you're going to go up, but then you're blocked by those ones that go up. So it's something like a, a downwards parabola, something like that. Okay, so I gave you a little note. You can check your solutions with Grapher. It always takes me a little bit to remember how to do these, so I looked it up earlier because I forgot. Um, but you go to graph or you just hit 2D graph. Have you guys used graph before? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you don't go, you go to new equation from template. So you might want to write yourself a little note. So new equation from template under equation. And we want a differential equation. So under the tabs, differential equation, we want what's called a first order implicit. First order means you're using the first derivative. You're not using the second derivative at all. Okay, and it kind of sets it up for you. So it has y prime equals, y of 0 equals. Um, it's first, so new equation from template. Um, go to differential equation, first order implicit. And it brings up something that looks like this. Okay, so we have y prime equals, and I'm going to, instead of having dot, 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 I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to do y minus 2x. And then I don't have what y of 0 is. What do I have? y of 
So I have the point 1, 0. That means y of 1, right? It's like f of x. It's the x value equals the y value, 0. So it's y of 1 equals 0. So when you hit enter, it should graph something like what we have right there. Okay, let's say we wanted to check the last one. Okay. So we go to our grapher. We have y prime equals x plus y. And, oh, sorry, x plus y. And then y of 0 equals 1. So it's saying when I plug in x equals 0, I get 1 out. Okay, and we get some kind of curve like that. Looks pretty much like ours, right? So that's one way you can kind of check to see if you got it right. All right. Okay, so like I said, there's tons of differential equations. We're going to learn about separable differential equations. So in these equations, you're going to be able to, be able to separate your x terms from your y terms. So you're going to get all the things with x on one side, all the things with y on the other side. Um, then you just find the antiderivative of each side. Okay, so number one, it says y prime equals y squared sine of x. Okay, y prime is dy over dx. Okay, and what we're going to do, it's going to be kind of strange. <laughs> we're going to take all the y's and bring it over with the y the dy. So when I divide my y squared over, I want 1 over y squared dy. And it's like I'm multiplying the dx over, which is very weird, but it's like a rate, right? Think of units. So you have sine of x dx. So we've separated our x and our y. Y's are all on the left, x's are all on the right. We can now integrate. We have the dy and dx that's needed. <laughs> so I have 1 over y squared. So remember, that's y to the negative 2. So how do I integrate? <laughs> y to the <laughs> negative 1, right? Add 1 to the power. 1 over that new power. So 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. You can write plus c over here, but we usually just write it on the x side. So just write 1 plus c on the, on the right-hand side. If I take the antiderivative of, of sine, what do I get? Negative cosine, right? Negative cosine of x plus c. Um, when you have numbers here, then you don't need the plus c, because the c goes away anyway. When you don't have numbers, you need it. OK. Now, on a lot of these, oh, did I not give you an initial? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, so notice in, in the future examples, I give you an initial condition. That's going to allow you to find c. But in the example I have right now, I don't have what c is. Okay, usually you want to try to solve for y unless it's completely impossible to solve for y. This one's not too bad. This is negative 1 over y equals negative cosine of x plus c. So if I'm taking the um, reciprocal of both sides, you get negative y equals 1 over negative cosine of x plus c. So you get y equals 1 over cosine of x minus c. You can change your variable. I mean, sometimes they'll write plus k then, or plus c sub 1, if you still want it to be plus. It doesn't matter. OK, and that's your answer. So we separated the variables, integrated both sides. OK, so let's try one like this. So we have dy and dt. So the y's I'm going to get on the left side, so I'm going to have y times the square root of 1 plus y squared. I'm realizing we don't know how to integrate this yet. I skipped a section. OK, and then uh, dy. And then I'm going to get t, e to the t. And we integrate both sides. 
Oh, DT. Thank you, Allie. Was it Allie? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to learn this in a, another section, but uh, two. Pretend you know how to integrate this. <laughs> this is what it would be. <laughs> like I said, we'll learn that in another section. Oh, I'll erase Allie's name. All right, equals, oh crap, can't integrate this one either. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna do this one because <laughs> that's using something even past the u substitution. Did I just say separate? No, solve, okay. We'll skip that one. <laughs> I know. Well, you have to use um, um, UDD, the integration by parts. All right, so we don't know how to integrate that, so we'll stop. Okay, so this next one, so I have 1 plus the square root of U. I'm mul multiplying it over with the DU equals 1 plus the square root of R, DR. And we integrate both sides. Okay, this one we know how to do. So we get u plus, what's the next part going to be? u to what power? Guys, you should know this right away. What's the original power? One half. So add one to it. Three over two with the two thirds out front. Equals, same thing over here. So r plus two thirds r to the 3 over 2 plus c. Okay, this one would be hard to solve for a u, so we're just going to leave it like that. Because there's two, like you have u and u to the 3 over 2. All right, next one. So separate the y and the x. So you're going to have 1 over y dy equals 1 over x dx. Do you guys see how I got that? Because the y you had to divide over to be with the dy. You're never going to have dy on the denominator. dy always needs to be on the top, right? Integrate. So you get natural log of the absolute value of y equals natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. We've talked about that one briefly. <laughs> we haven't really learned it. But. How come you just have to do y to the negative one? How come you do what? It's really, isn't it really y to the negative one? Negative yeah, so if it's y to the negative one and you add one to the power, yeah. it's y to the zero. So you have to think, what do I need for y if I had one over x? Or what do I need for y if y prime is one over x? Remember, that was always natural log of x? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going the opposite way. And we have to do absolute values when we integrate because we can't have the natural log of a negative number. So we do absolute values. All right, and then if you're solving for y, this one gets a little weird. Um, this will happen a lot, but if you solve for y, you need to get rid of natural log. So how do you get rid of natural log? Yeah, so you do e to the natural log of absolute value of y equals e to the natural log of absolute value of x plus c. So you end up with absolute value of y equals, and what they'll do a lot of times is if you see e to the natural log of absolute value of x, that's the same as um, like that, like e to the natural log of x times e to the c. You can see how you could just add their powers. So then they do something weird. They just call this a new variable, and they'll do that a lot on your free response questions. So that will be like k, so new variable k e to the natural log of x, absolute value of x. Oh, it's a number. Because mm -hmm, e to the c is a number, yep, it's a new constant. Okay, and then the last step, instead of having absolute value of y, you do y equals, and you write plus or minus, k e to the natural log of the absolute value of x. Multiply the y 
over. We divided yeah. the y over. Mm-hmm. It's like you multiplied by 1 over y, maybe. Maybe that'll, that will be easier. So multiply by 1 over y to get rid of the y. So you have 1 over y over here. And then multiply that by the dx. Okay, now with these natural log ones, there comes um, something that's very kind of confusing later with the initial condition. So we're going to talk about um, the initial condition, um, and we'll get to one of those. That you have to, Basically, you have to talk about the domain, because for a, that's confusing, but the differential equations have to have a continuous domain. So what happens with natural logs, even if you have the natural log of the absolute value of x, that's undefined somewhere. It's defined for all negative values. It's defined for all positive values, right? You just take the absolute value. But where is it undefined? At zero, right? You can't take natural log of zero. So basically, like, you would have some kind of curve on one side, curve on the other side, and then at zero you have undefined. So you have to get rid of that domain, and you have to pick a side. You have to pick one of the branches, so either the right side or the left side. <laughs> okay. So find the solution of the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition. So we're going to use an initial condition now. So remember, y prime is dy over dx. So basically, you just multiply the x over or the dx over. So you have x cosine of x dx. And you integrate. using all kinds of things. See, I, I used to teach this at the very end of the year, and now, I don't know, the book has it way before, so I've used a lot of my examples from the very end of the year, but we don't have to know how to integrate this yet, so <laughs> maybe I should just have Mackenzie do it, because Mackenzie did it in her Calc BC class. <laughs> all right, well, let me pause, <laughs> and I will integrate it. All right, so I integrated it. So like I said, you guys don't know how to do that yet. I won't give you one that you don't know how to do. <laughs> you should be able to do them. Um, okay, so when you integrate, you get this. Okay, so now you need your initial condition. So your initial condition was that y of 0 equals 0. So that allows you to find what c is. So when you plug in 0, you get 0 sine of 0 plus cosine of 0 plus c equals y squared, or sorry, 0 squared, plus 1 third e to the 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 plus c equals 1 third times e to the 0, so that's 1 third times 1. So c equals negative 2 thirds. So for your answer, you write x sine of x plus cosine of x minus 2 thirds <coughs> equals y squared plus 1 third e to the 3y. Do you guys see how this would be difficult to solve for y in this one? If it had just been y squared, then you could just take the square root, right, plus or minus, but it's y squared plus 1 third e to the 3y. All right, so we leave it like this. All right, the next one. So I have dy over dx equals xy quantity squared. So that's that's easy. That's just x squared, y squared, right? Separate. So I'm going to have x squared dx. I need to divide the y squared to the other side. So I have 1 over y squared dy, which is y to the negative 2, if you want to write it that way. Integrate. So if I had y to the negative 2, when you integrate, you get y to the negative 1 with a negative 1 out front. If you integrate this one, you get x to the third with a 1 third out front plus c. And it actually says solve for y, and it gives you a value. It gives you an initial condition. It says if uh, y equals 1 when x equals 1. So you have minus 1 to the negative 1 equals 1 third 1 cubed plus c. Third, 
1 to the negative 1 is 1 over 1, so that's 1, with a negative out front, so you get negative 1. So you end up with negative 4 thirds equals C. So negative 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3. So right now you have negative y to the negative 1 equals 1 third x to the 3 minus 4 thirds. And now you can solve for y. So what do you think I'm going to do first? Give me a suggestion. Yeah, Dana? Yeah, let's get rid of the negative. So I have y to the negative 1 equals negative 1 third x to the 3 plus 4 thirds. This is why I always think it's easy to, like a lot of people will solve for y from here and then find what c is at the end. I think it's easiest to find c and then um, switch it around just so you don't have to worry about, is this the original c? Is this a new c? All right, um, so this is y to the negative 1, so that's 1 over y equals negative 1 third x to the third plus 4 thirds. So you get y equals, now what is the reciprocal of all that? <laughs> yeah, do you guys see how it has common denominators? It's negative x cubed plus 4 all over 3. Write it that way first, so when you take the reciprocal, it's 3 over, I guess you could write 4 minus x cubed. That's the easiest way. So that's your answer. Okay, you could always go back and check these. You could find the derivative and see if it's equal to x times y squared. Because we didn't have any initial condition in the other ones. We didn't have, like, when x equals something. All right, find an equation of the curve that passes through the point 0, 1, and whose slope at x, y is x times y. Okay, so this is just written a different way, but it means the same thing. So it's saying the slope, so dy over dx, equals x times y. It's telling you the point, so that's like saying y of 0 equals 1, right? x is 0, y is 1. Okay, divide by y. Multiply by dx. Integrate. So you get natural log of the absolute value of y equals 1 half x squared plus c. So you can plug in your points. So plug in 0 for x, 1 for y. So you get 0 c. All right, so that means your equation is natural log of the absolute value of y equals 1 half x squared. And we want to solve for y. So again, to get rid of natural log, do e raised to both sides. And then take the, like, right plus or minus. Oops. Okay, and that's almost all you need for your answer, but if you ever have a natural log, like, see how you have natural log of the absolute value of y? You need to decide, is your y greater than 0 or is y less than 0? Okay, based on your initial condition, which one do we have? See how the y value is 1? If it had been negative 1, you'd select this one. But since it's 1, you say y has to be greater than 0. And that's what I was saying, like your domain has to be continuous. You can't have any breaks in your domain. So if I had natural log somewhere, I have a break in there because it's undefined at 0. So you need to pick one of the branches. So either pick the right side or the left side, depending on your initial condition. Okay, and we'll do more like that tomorrow. So it's y is greater than 0. All right, let me give you your homework so you guys can start it. Hang on. Okay.